Today's show is sponsored by ExpressVPN. You working from home like me? Protect your sensitive data with an extra layer of security at expressvpn.com slash funhouse. Peek, how are you doing? I'm well. How are you? I am well as well. Uh, I noticed you're wearing several layers. It's cold in this part of the house. Mm-hmm. All the heat heat rises, they say. Yeah. Do you think that may, you know how it's sometimes it's like, you know, fool me once shame on you, fool me twice, shame on me, right? Mm -hmm. Do you think that the fact that you always end up in places where it's cold in that particular place, maybe it's more about you than it is about the place? I'll have to think about that. I'm in a t-shirt, you know, I'm sometimes I'm too hot, you know, I barely can put sleeves on at all. Damn it. I was just gonna say it's because I have all this muscle and so little fat, but <laughs> I once saw an episode of Baywatch when I was a kid where some guy was training so hard to be a really good swimmer that his body fat percentage dropped so low that he was shivering and freezing cold. And that's when like there's the intervention happened. They were like, Don't you understand? Your body fat's too low, you're freezing. And I always remember hanging on to that and going like like, could you imagine if you were so jacked and so <laughs> ripped that you were cold all the time? Anyway, hey everybody, welcome to Woo Woo. Peek and I are gonna go through some of your comments on our recent videos and also look at some of the amazing pieces of fan art, uh, fan creations. I don't even know what to call it anymore because they're they're multimedia things now. I don't even really, we need a more encompassing fan work or something like that. Speaking, first of all, of not learning the right lesson from a piece of media, I wanna pull a couple comments from Loose Slot and Cum Lines uh, Four Kings Casino gameplay. You're getting those cocktail waitresses the entire time. You're only putting Stra- your money get, on when there's getting a cocktail those drinks, Getting those drinks, getting those drinks. Every single waitress. time they're around, you're getting a drink, okay? Yeah. By the way, the title for that is a real classic Funhouse title, if you ask me. Bones outdid himself. It amazes me, like, after how many years of this, the titles still keep coming. Zombie Gangsta Samurai, which is a movie I would absolutely watch, said Ryan's gambling addiction is only based on the fact that he can get free food at the casino. Yeah, I could kind of see myself doing the same thing, being frugal moogle kind of mm-hmm. kind of thing, but I think I think Ryan takes it to a whole nother level. But guess what? You don't need a room. You go to right outside the Bellagio pool and you go up to somebody going in there going, hey, Sorry, we left our we left our cards up in our room. Can we be your guest at the pool? Some nice person is going to say yes. Then you sleep at the Bellagio pool outside all day. That's your room. That casino game was interesting because Ryan and I clearly both like gambling, but have different perspectives on gambling. Like he sees it as an opportunity to finally win big and like go home rich where I'm like, how can I stretch the money that I am inevitably going to lose over the longest period of time so I can enjoy myself? Idealistic versus uh, realist, right? I have another comment on this video from Calum O'Neill. At work, I got told I needed to buy a lamp so they could see my face for a 30 minute meeting we have once a week. Yet here Ryan is sitting in the dark, just like me, windows shining behind him, and he's making content that stays on the internet. Yes, Hmm. Calum. This is a great point. Ryan does a lot of filming of stuff on his own. So you would think he would know like as he was setting up his his room or whatever whatever hovel he he happens to be in at the time for filming, he would he would look at a window and go, that can't be behind me. <laughs> Maybe. I'm just remembering that that first behind the scenes at home uh thing we did wait, like almost a year ago now when quarantine started where everyone sent in clips of their at home space or something like that or at home work setup. This is where it all happens. So let me, there's a lot of different parts to the facility. So here, here's the production facility. You can't see Ryan's floor because of the the stuff. I think he'll get there with the lighting, but I, I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't hold. I wouldn't hold your breath. What up, Peek? Where have you been talking shit? Where have you been talking shit about my room? Room slash production studio. Need I remind you? But guess what? I got news for you. Check it out. I cleaned. So fuck you. Yeah! There's a video coming out eventually where Ryan tells a story about some prior living conditions that he worked in. This is one of the, when we went back into the office to film. <sighs> baby, oh baby, he, his situation now is like living in a mansion. <laughs> This wasn't the nude camp, was it? This is something else? No, this is something else. Okay. I'm sure there's plenty of nudity, whether (laughs) intentional or not. 
We also have some comments from our 2021 Funhouse Do Your Best at Sports Movie Scene Reenactment Challenge. There's probably a 70% chance I suck at this one, but a 30% chance I knock it out of the park. Full disclosure, this was a sponsored video by HBO mm -hmm. Max, but I think it turned out really, really funny. I, I, I really laughed did. a lot watching it. Joe Ash, actually from Live Action, put this one together. Mm -hmm. Talented dude over there went to work on this one. But yeah, I agree. It turned out really, really well. Yeah, and it also introduced everyone to a brand new Funhouse cast member. Jack Mack noticed uh, Roy Chestnut. <laughs> is the exact person I picture if someone mentions Canada. He's the platonic ideal for a stereotypical Canadian in my eyes. Perfection. Sorry, Elise. Roy's my new favorite Funhouse Canadian. It was it established in the canon that Roy is Canadian? I mean, it makes sense. Yeah, I don't recall Roy ever saying he was Canadian, but it does make sense that he is. So I only got to meet Roy very, very briefly after everything had been filmed at the premiere. I believe it was salt of the earth, nicest mm. guy. I, now that I think of it, pockets stuffed full of coffee crisp bars. Oh, are coffee crisp bars a Canadian thing? Oh, you bet okay. they are. This episode is brought to you by stamps.com. Getting out my front door to run errands is a little complicated. Getting to the post office is a whole production for me, but I don't worry about it anymore, thanks to stamps.com. Stamps.com brings the services of the US Postal Service and UPS right in one place, right on my computer. If you own a business, stamps.com is a must have that will make running the day to day so much easier. And who couldn't use that right now? You just use your computer to print official US postage 24 seven for any letter, any package, any class of mail, anywhere you wanna send it. Uh, and and once your mail is ready, you just schedule a pickup or drop it off. It's super easy, simple. With stamps.com, you can get discounts up to 40% off post office rates and up to 62% off UPS shipping rates. So stop scrambling to find your wallet and stop wasting time going to the post office. Go to stamps.com instead. There's no risk. And with the promo code open house, you get a special offer that includes a four week trial plus free postage and a digital scale. No long term commitments or contracts. Go to stamps.com, click on the microphone at the top of the homepage, type in open house, that's stamps.com, promo code open house, stamps.com. Never go to the post office again, unless you really want to go. Josh Wee also said, Elise and Ryan are both 34. My twin split at birth theory is slowly coming together. I would watch this movie if we did twins and it was, we are supposed to assume that Elise and Ryan are twin siblings. And I know Elise would want to be the Danny DeVito. She'd probably say something like, I want to be the Danny DeVito. We also have some comments from Funhouse back in the studio playing board games, The Journey Begins Now which is our new Board as Hell series. You can't defend a country Burn! with a theater troop. Ow, my hand! I have told you before, oh. we will not have flames being tossed around ah. this council table. My God, at least not in the first episode. We, over the course of two days, with so we could be COVID safe and, and be very precautioned, filmed an entire eight episodes worth of King's Dilemma, which is the closest you can come to a Game of Thrones board game that isn't Game of Thrones. And I would say in some ways it's even more Game of Thrones. It was a super fun undertaking. Uh, Charlotte, Ryan, Lindsay, myself, and John Smith were all there. Uh, Dan produced it. We had Rick in studio helping us out. Everyone was all separated from each other when we could be, but more importantly, the chaos was all assembled by you, Peak. So you definitely have a certain insight into that video. I don't know if you want to pick one of these comments and uh, sure. and respond to it. A lot of work to cut in the middle of episode three right now. Well done at the end there. I love when you screwed mm -hmm. Ryan over the man. <laughs> Put them all there. All of it? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so those of us that have bet upon the bank have lost everything that is God in. damn it! He just fell right into it. Mm hmm The internet help desk said, so when is James going to stab everyone in the back and betray them? It's a cooperative game, but it's also individually, there's a benefit to it for sure, so. And Will Becker says, I love how James has kept a variation of Derek as his alter ego for years now. I was, I, I was wondering this myself. What is the story there? And if, forgive me if you've already told it. Sometimes I do things that don't necessarily have purpose or meaning or stories. That's fine. I just think Derek is like the funniest name for a, a, an adult male. I love goofy, weird things that don't necessarily have to make sense. They're just fun in your yeah. mind and you just do them. I mean, I, I'm the same person who, I have two Instagram ac accounts. One is James Willems, where I show pictures of my feet and the other is James Willems' feet, where I show pictures of my face. I do these things to amuse myself 
No one is ever obligated to laugh and oftentimes they do not. Rimothy Logbone, which honestly sounds like a great character that should have played King's Dilemma with us. Anyone else surprised at how well Ryan could read? I'm really proud of him. I, I get where this comment's coming from, but yeah, I would say he's smarter than me, which is a low bar, to, not not that high of a bar to, to hit. He also is like always at the front of his brain. Like he's always, whatever he's thinking of is the thing he's saying. <laughs> Before we show off some fan art, I would be remiss if I did not mention this comment from X. L. Roche, the editing on this was fantastic. Peak, that's all you. Thanks, I'm trying, I don't know. I don't know, I don't know if I'd go that far. Well, again, another peek behind the scenes, no pun intended, which is a segment that we probably should have started doing five years ago, call it a peek behind the scenes. Why didn't we do that? God damn it. The first recording episode for King's Dilemma, Bored as Hell, was two hours and 20 minutes or something like that, two and a half hours. It was two hours and six minutes. Really two hours and six had. minutes. You delivered an episode, first episode that's how long? It's a little over an hour. I was reading the comments for it and no one was like, I don't understand, I'm not following this. Like that is that is an editorial skill set that you you have in, in spades. Well, you guys give me a lot to work with, so appreciate it. We got some fan art and some fan videos to show off real quick. This is from Midnight Sun Creative and it is very creative. It's a little Wrestling with the Week fan art. Uh, Wrestling with the Week is an AEW podcast that I do with Eric Badur and Scorpio Sky, Face of the Revolution. And it is basically us completely destroying a whole bunch of masked wrestlers and it's Really amazing fan art. It's great action, but I also love how like interested I am in all the other wrestlers that are getting slammed. <laughs> Reddit user Pixel Perfect did a little Willem's Family fan art, which is just wondrous. Uh, they're also at Purely Pixels if you want to see more of their stuff. But yeah, classic James face. You Google James, you're gonna get it. We got a great Benson face. You can see the little concern. That's we had to take Benson to the vet the other day, and uh, and that was the mm. expression he gave us from the back seat of the car, and then. Elise with her hair blowing in the wind, all very great. And then we also have from Zertap 10, this song <laughs> that someone, have you heard this song? Oh, Elise, 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 you are the woman of my dreams, dreams, dreams. And for now, at least it seems, 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 can't go a day. This was so much better than what I expected when I first <laughs> clicked it. I was like, this is pretty good, actually. You know, I'll be honest with you, a little weird that it's written about Elise. Sure, yes. Um, but uh, I was still found like, I was like kind of like bumping to it. And then, and then I caught Elise singing it. I, was, like, I think she was like making dinner or something and, I, and she was like singing the, the hook. <laughs> Don't look at the next one. Do you have a pen and paper near you? Kinda. Do you remember the cool S that you would draw? Do you can you draw that from memory? Oh, I bet I probably can. Go Fido Go <laughs> spent hours and made a Elise Graffito single graffiti. And no offense, Go Fido Go, but this one is this one is incorrect. Oh, I think oh this isn't it. I'm close. Oh wait. Oh no, that's not it either. Dang it! I'm like 90% of the way there. What do you got? I know that's not it. I'm still stuck here. So do upper left, upper left to middle to middle, and then go a minute. upper middle to left to middle bottom. I'm not getting it. We should just okay. move on. All right, all right, <laughs> let's move on. Last but not least, Clive Tolney. It wouldn't be a woo woo without Clive. It's the age of Burger King is over. The time for the Burger Queen has come, and it's Elise with her royal crown, her Burger King crown, and her royal garb. There, you would think he would have made it say Burger Queen. She's she's a McDonald's gal. She's Mick Gang for life, you know? And, mm. and there have been times where the option has come to get Burger King and she has passed on Burger King, even if it meant not necessarily getting a burger at all. So Ronald is her is her king. That's <laughs> all we got for this. That's all we got for this episode of Woo Woo. Matt Peake, thank you so much for joining me. Thank you, James. We love seeing your comments. We love reading through your comments, especially the funny ones. And uh, and we love seeing your fan art and the things you guys make. Incredibly talented. Thank you so much for joining us. And we'll see you on the next Woo Woo. See ya. The woman of my dreams, dreams, dreams And for now it seems, seems, seems Can't go a day